Fernando Ruiz Art. Hi everybody. Happy Veterans Day. Here in the U.S. we're observing uh, Veterans Day today. Today being November 11th. And uh, in honor of the day, I thought that I would dig back into the archives once again and uh, take a look at one of the more unique jobs that I've done in the past. And what we're looking at here are a few copies of uh, PS Magazine, the Pre Preventative Maintenance Monthly. Now this was a magazine that was uh, done by the United States Army uh, and it would be issued uh, to their soldiers and made available to their soldiers. Um, and what the magazine is, is it's a bit of a fusion between comics and um, uh, an instructional manual. Uh, and it was all about the maintenance of all types of military equipment. And this would cover everything from cleaning your helmet to uh, changing the treads on a tank. Um, and the magazine dates all the way back to the 1950s. It was started by the legendary Will Eisner. Uh, and it went through a couple of hands along the way before finally uh, going to Joe Kuber. Uh, some, uh, I want to say, hmm, not sure when it landed in Joe's lap, but he took it over many, many years ago. Uh, and it was done, put together, and illustrated uh, initially by Joe himself, but it was put together at the Kubert School. Um, where Joe had his own uh, graphics studio called Telegraphics. Uh, after Joe passed away, uh, Telegraphics continued to put the magazine together, uh, and um, a number of different artists were brought in to help do the artwork, uh, and I was one of them. So uh, what we're looking at here are a couple of the issues that I did uh, and not only did I do these issues, but um, I illustrated these covers. Now, the interesting thing, and here's a here's a standard comic book, so we could compare, so we could see the difference in size. So you can see, PS Magazine is actually a little bit smaller, or substantially smaller. Now, uh, the way we worked was. Um, unique in that there were artists who specialized in the equipment and there were artists who specialized in the figures uh, and other assorted background work. Um, so I was one of the figure guys. So wait, wait, what you see here, um, I drew everything other than the vehicles. So all those canyons, the uh, tracks, the dust, um, I also did the uh, what they called the animation of the vehicles, which was adding the cartoon faces to the vehicles. That would be me. So generally, I would add those faces to um, blocks that I would just block in, uh, and then another artist would follow me and add all the detail to bring the, uh, the machinery to life. And that was because the army was, um, <clears throat> understandably, very particular about its equipment. Uh, it, it was, after all, an instructional magazine, so they had to be very, very clear about that. And um, all the equipment had to be very much spot on. So on this one, uh, I did, what you see here, those little... Uh, Thermostat guys, those were mine. Canyons were all mine. <clears throat> now every issue, you know, aside from the instructional stuff, every issue had a little eight or ten page story in it. And usually that required a little more drawing from me. So... That was a fun one, I remember. Kind of a steampunkish story. And really, the, the stories would be, would be really just about anything. 
So the, these are the finished magazine. Uh, sadly enough, uh, PS um, ended earlier this year, so it's it's no longer done. Um, I, I illustrated it around 2013, and I did it for about a year and a half. Um, but sadly, uh, the Army chose to end the magazine uh, just this past year. Now, here are original pages. This was for an eight-page story that I did for, for one of the issues. Uh, looks like issue uh, 721, if anyone can track it down. Uh, and you can see, uh, if I get, now here is, this is a page. Uh, this is a regular standard comic book page. Okay. And this one is actually from Space Captain Miyuki, uh, which is a book that I'm illustrating for Pixie Tricks Comics. And I may talk about that some more in another video. But you can compare the size of the art involved. So, yeah, I was drawing much smaller. Um, now, in this case, I was given layouts. So... Layouts means that somebody else planned out how the artwork was going to go. So it was given these, you know, and these didn't need to be drawn perfectly. I believe these were done by Adam Kubert himself. If you can see, you know, it's, it's largely uh, how the story is broken down and the placement of characters. So I would take this info and I would draw it. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think I did do a lot of what you see here. Uh, certainly the figures, I think, I think I actually did the backgrounds too in this. Um, uh, the, it's, uh, I only did the penciling. The inking was done by somebody else. Uh, this was also a little bit of a parody on Peanuts, so... Some of these characters might seem a little familiar. The uh, the guy that you see there in on the upper left-hand corner, uh, he was based on a real soldier, so I was given reference for him. Now here you can see somebody else did that uh, did that truck. Uh, I did the figures here. And those were all mine. And I also just did the pencils, if I didn't make that clear before. So somebody else went over these pencils with ink. There you could see uh, panel two. You can see a good deal of graphic white which is kind of like a, a professional grade white out when into correcting some sort of mistake. You know, looking at these inks, I'm wondering if maybe I did these inks. They look like they might have been mine. And there's another page. easy page of all close-ups there is the last page of the story and there you can see some more trucks the trucks again they weren't mine and there you can see this was reference supplied to me that was the soldier that was involved on page one I guess he had appeared before in the magazine um, the magazine had its recurring characters that were sort of hosts for what was being talked about. And they would kind of uh, break the fourth wall and speak to the reader about whatever topic was being uh, dealt with. Um, you know, how to clean your rifle, things like that. Um, but every now and then they would actually use a real uh, serviceman. And, uh, of course, they'd give me the reference so I could draw him properly. Uh, so there's 
copies of the roughs. You can see these are uh, the, the layouts that I was working from. More copies of those. And it, this is all just for placement and composition, just so that I know what's what. And there's, there's the script. And that's, you can see uh, the script all broken down, panel by panel. And uh, there's some more reference on that soldier. And I, I believe this may have been done, it looks like it was done by Joe himself, these, this reference. And that's uh, another version of the script. So that's, uh, that's just about everything. So uh, this was a fun gig. It was an interesting gig because it was very, it was a very different way of working from what I normally did. Um, so I, I thought I'd share this with you guys, especially today being Veterans Day. I thought you guys might find it interesting. Um, if you did, let me know. Uh, if, if this utterly bored you, let me know too, and I will never do this again. Um, but I thought it was interesting, and I thought it'd be a nice change from the usual videos that we do. Again, this is PS Magazine. Um, I really don't know where anybody would find these uh, anymore, I'm sure. I'm sure if you looked hard enough, there's always somebody selling everything. Um, but I did it for about a year and a half, around 2013, 2014. Uh, and it was, a, it was an interesting gig. It was a fun gig. Uh, a lot of work, but it was, it was, it was interesting. Um, and, you know, even I learned things uh, while I was doing it. So um, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, Thanks for tuning in. Again, if you have any questions, comments, uh, let me know in the comments section below. Um, and uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, and uh, click like and all that jazz. Okay, I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks a lot, everybody.